Hi, welcome back to the Seek Truth Podcast with your host Ashley Paola and Joey Swisher. Uh, this podcast is faith-based, talk about Jesus, talk about the word, encouragement, giving you hope, and just really hoping that you're going to want to seek truth more, which is Jesus Christ himself. Yeah, we just really felt led to minister hope to the people out yes. there um, with everything that's going on, you know, just wars and rumors of wars, um, just the fear that people are struggling with right now, and just letting them know that there's hope in Christ. He yeah. is the ultimate hope. And you have better get to the place where you trust him and make him your hope going forward. Because yeah. hate to say it, but things may not get better. Yeah, they're not going to get better mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, we were sitting here and we were thinking about what to talk about. And we kind of just had a moment with worship. And I just felt the word hope kept coming up like, People need hope. You know, like you said, it's, it's dark out there and it's only going to get worse. Um, and so coming from a background where I used to have so much anxiety attacks, panic attacks, which I know you have as well. I know that, you know, five, seven, ten years ago. Had is a big key. The capital H though, had, H-A-D, is, is crucial. <laughs> crucial. That was like life detrimental, threatening, you know what I mean? Like that, that's... I mean, Sucks. I, it, it I literally, literally thought I was dying, yeah. like doom and gloom. And so I can only imagine if the circumstances that we're, we're, we find ourselves now, like the state of the world, I, if I didn't have Jesus, I would be, mm -hmm. I'd be lost and losing my mind. And so I know there's a lot of people out there that are anxious yeah. because of personal things and also just the state of the world. And so we have the answer. So we want to share that with you today. Mm -hmm. You want to pray? Let's pray yeah. Father, we just come before you. We thank you, God, that your word says, where two or more are gathered, there you are in agreement. Lord, your word says, where the spirit of the Lord is made Lord, there is freedom, there is liberty, there is peace. Lord, we just pray that you go before us now and you would start to touch the hearts of the listeners, God. Father, I pray that by your stripes they are healed. Father, I pray that the Holy Ghost will give them comfort and joy and peace. Lord, we bind up every spiritual attack of over every listener's mind right now. Father, we come against depression. Yes. We come against anxiety yes. and panic attacks in Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Father, we come against the spirit of fear. For your word says that you do not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and a sound mind. I thank you, God, that your words are not return void. I thank you that they are a hammer that shatters the rock in its hard places. They are an all-consuming fire, and it will burn out everything in these listeners' yes. hearts. Father, your word is like a double-edged sword, and it will pierce through the inner depths of their hearts, through the bone and marrow, and it would, uh, it would show the intents of the mind and the heart and expose it and, and bring it to its knees. Father, bless this podcast. Bless the listeners. Let it be fruitful and multiply all over the world, all over the nation, for your people. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Wow. Thank you, God. So many... <laughs> <laughs> avenues to go in this hope. yeah seriously well as we were praying I was remembering a time where I was having a severe panic attack and I was out in Texas so I didn't really know many people and I was it was really scary it's very demonic because I was hearing voices of doom and gloom about myself about my past and then of the future and I was tr searching everywhere for some type of um like healing and some comfort and because I literally felt like I was going to lose my mind and it wasn't until all of my options ran out I went to a man didn't help I tried meditation didn't help I tried uh, drinking water breathing all the things that people say to do in the secular world when it comes to anxiety um, it nothing worked until I was like oh my goodness Jesus, because I had slid back for so long. And so this is just, I just want to remind you, like, it doesn't matter how far you think you've gone. God is right there next to you and you can call on him, call on the name of Jesus. Because when I did that, literally demons, they fled, mm -hmm. they, they fled and, um, flee, flee or fled? Is it they bounced. <laughs> they bounced. <laughs> they got a hitch, you know this. They had to go. Yeah. Amen. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to share that because... I feel like there's someone listening right now that, well, I'm not perfect. I just sinned. I just fell. I haven't read my Bible. All, all this list of lies that the enemy has told you to keep you in bondage of anxiety. But no, 
you could Jesus is there. He is the freedom, and He's the only thing that's gonna keep you away of those shackles. You know what? I just felt right now that there's people that family members have said, "Hey, this is hereditary." Mm. Your your aunts had it, your grandma had it, your dad had it. So yes, yes you have it, and they have, have, have actually made you agree to be on medication. That this is something that you have no control over. This is something that's passed down, which yeah. it is. It mm -hmm. could be spiritually. Um, it could be through trauma. Yeah. It could be handed down, generational curse. Um, it could be imparted. Mm -hmm. And there's so many ways that depression, anxiety, and um, panic attacks can come. But ultimately, what we're, like, we're gonna show you right now in this is that it is not of God. Yeah. It is not a God, and you do not have to live with it, and you do not have to take medication. Like, I used to take Xanax, um, Aprilozam, yeah. Ativan, shoot, I can go on the list of I used to take uh, Lexapro. Lexapro. Antidepressant. Lexano. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Lexano, all Ativan, no. Like, all these yeah, things. Yeah, are, yeah, Then do they help? You know what? And I went through the process of winging off, in a sense, too. Um, but ultimately, ultimately, man, I, oh God, how can you just... I just pray that people know because I've counseled a lot of people in this and they want to know what pill did you take? Yeah. Like what remedy did you do? And I tell them, hey, oh man, um, it was Jesus Christ. They get offended. Yeah. They get hurt and they, they want to hang up the phone. Yeah. They think it, that that can't be real. Because that's that's work. That takes a process. They think it takes a work and process, but I'm like, it's, it's not, it's not that hard. Yeah. But they want a quick fix. Give me a pill that can mellow me out yeah. and I won't have a panic attack. But when you tell them the truth, they don't understand it. Um, and like I said, we're in a generation of now. Popcorn generation. We want everything now. and um, It's sad. But yeah, some people will, ah, well, okay. And then they'll hang up the phone or something. you know. And and people refer people to me because all my friends and family know if they're watching, they know that I was like the king of panic attacks. Like, yeah, me too. I had them oh, queen. every day. Yeah. Like every day yeah. for since high school. Like to the point where it was telling me stab my teacher. Well, the teacher was like, hey, what's wrong with you? Pay attention. I'm like boiling up inside, like I'm about to do something to yeah. him. And I would, I would ditch school, leave school, because I was like, I'm gonna hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, at parties, it would get worse. Well, I was like, man, I'm yeah. gonna kill somebody, you know. Yeah. Or then I would, I, I walked around tables one time, like twenty five thousand times, and and people are looking. I mean, the whole, all these gangsters are looking at me like, what is up with this dude? And yeah. um, I didn't care because I was just panicking, tripping. Uh, me too. I had so me many too. episodes, you know, calling my mom. You know, someone you have a, a person you can always call. Like, I call my mom two, three, four, the more, whatever. No, I, need, I need them to answer. If they don't answer, it's over. I'm dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone yeah, doesn't yeah. answer and talk to me, I'm dead. Yes, you know? And yes. then, I don't know how many times I've gotten in the car, went to the emergency, came back. Me too. Oh, my No, goodness. don't go, Joey. Because if, and there's something in the mind, like, if you give in 100 and go, it's over. Like, you totally agree to it because you're battling, right? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I've had crazy things like, I'm, you know, I'm just going to say this because I'm transparent, but, like, Monkeys, I see little monkeys yeah. like in my head, mine, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, and it's, it's torture. Yeah, torture. Yeah, I. I and I then would, what does the devil do? I would literally have a, there actually is still a hole in in my room because I would throw stuff because I'd be mm -hmm. tripping out and I could not stop the voices or I could not stop the 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 fear because mm -hmm. my parents, my brother, they were like, you're fine, you're fine, because I would All end right. up in the emergency room so many times. That they're like, you're just having another anxiety attack. I'm like, it's not anxiety. I'm going to die. Like, I'm going to die. And This then, one's different than the last one. Right, right. And then... Um, isn't that worse though, too, when people are like, 18 to mind, chill. You're like, yeah. oh my God. Because you're, you're holding on to hope that they're going to somehow save you yeah, or they're going to be the one to help you. Yeah, but when you say it's in my mind, stop, it makes it worse. It you're makes like, it oh worse. My God, yeah. 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 So, so that's... Mm, and I've tried that's everything. That. I tried um, yoga. I did meditation. I did psychedelics, I did breathing techniques, affirmations, literally all the things that new age and just spiritual practices they mm -hmm. say that works. I would say that it did work, but only for short periods of time. And I think that demons will give you relief for a little bit until they want to mess with you again. Yeah. But with Jesus, that is the that's the thing that is everlasting. It's forever. It's there. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit, which I know we're gonna get into. But that is what's gonna give you that relief. That is the ultimate medicine. Yeah. Is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, and you don't don't get your counsel 
from ungodly people. Yeah, like, that's not Because you're going to know a friend or cousin or someone when you talk about it because that's what you're going to talk about. That's mm-hmm. all I talked about. Joey, what's up, man, bro? I'm having panic attacks, dude. I'm having... Or why'd you leave the party the other day? Or why didn't you come, man, bro? I'm going... You know, so they're going to know you for that. And then you're going to... Me too. And I've had friends that were like, hey, bro, what I do is I smoke weed, bro, and it, it takes oh, it away. Yeah. And because they had a little bit of anxiety. Yeah. Like, there's a whole different ballgame. No, like, just, panic attacks and anxiety disorder yeah. is like, oh, I have some anxiety. Yeah. Two different worlds. Depression, whole different worlds. So you're like, oh, for real? That helps. So then you start smoking weed, and now my anxiety attacks tripled. Paranoia, huh? Yeah. Or, hey, yeah. bro, I drink a tall can and then smoke, and then I'm good. And you're like, really? That works? And this is what my younger days, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, same. And I'm like, well, yeah. and then it made it worse. It yeah. made it worse. But I want to um, just share a testimony of how it came upon me. So I remember a friend in, in my neighborhood. So in my neighborhood in Rialto, we all, everyone met up like clockwork, right? It, it's You came outside, you 30, 40 guys, you know who's who. Once you start seeing a guy not come around no more, you either, A, did he get busted, right? Is he in jail? You know, is he dead or is he alive? Well, he's alive, but he, he's still right there on the block, right? Yeah, why is he not coming out? So everyone would talk. And um, there's a good friend of mine in... Um, um, I don't think he'll mind me saying his name. You know, this is real. But my buddy Ernie, we were like, what's going on Ernie, right? And, and the whole neighborhood, a lot of people are on dope and that messes people up. We're like, yeah. man, maybe he's bad on dope. Then we started seeing the ambulance go to his house a lot and, and, and stuff. We're like, what's going on? So one day he comes to my house and he comes in. I'm like, dude, what's up, man? Like, where you been? What's going on? He's like, bro, I've been having these panic attacks, these anxiety. And I'm like, what the heck is that? I've never heard about it, right? Mm. But my dad had some and my grandma had some too, so... I never heard the term or just even know what it was. Yeah. He was like, man, bro, I get this fear and I get this thing. And it's like, I'm tripping out. And I called, I've been calling the ambulance and da, da, da. And I was like, and then I think he had one right there. Cause he goes, and I remember this like day, like, this is like nine. This is probably, I was in high school. So he goes, Dang. he goes, yeah, he goes, I gotta go. I gotta go. And he left. Boom. And I'm like, what the heck? That was weird. I'm like, whatever. You know, <laughs> that night I had my first panic attack. Whoa. I sat in the oh, bed. Demons be yeah. jumping. Them demons thing, be was jumping. Part of them demons came upon me. And I know you guys are sitting there oh. like, oh, you guys are tripping. No. Come on. You know, it doesn't... And yes. I'm telling you a true story right now. And God is right here and listening. And, and I felt this jump, boom. And I just would have this panic attack. And from there on, I had them every day. And I, and I just was like, where did this come from? And I... And I had it bad, so like bad. Scary. And Thank you, Jesus, from brain. That and, is yeah, scary that's how thing. mine came upon me, you know. And um, then you heard, then you have them so bad. Your family knows, like, well, your grandma had, and you know, all that was true. So maybe there was a a part that was there that was like a residue, of, you know, an inheritance. But then he just that spirit yeah. came and just bam manifested that thing, you know. Yeah. And it was just part of it. Man, it almost caused me to take my own life. Yeah. You know, that's you're you're so young. You're like, this is my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I'm gonna have rest of my life. It's like I just remember no like life. not wanting. To, I used to want to play outside with the kids, like bikes and stuff, playing with chalks. Just playing in the neighborhood was something I always did. But as soon as I started having panic attacks, I remember I I wouldn't want to go out. Like, and I felt like I'm like what eight years old, nine years old, and I'm really thinking like this is life. Like I don't oh, want that. Young, huh? Yeah, wow. the first time I had it was about seven, eight years old, when my little cousin got. Um, he was to the hospital because he had like a stomach something anyway so I went to go visit him and he was all tubed up and so that was the first time I ever saw anybody close to me or anybody really experience like real sickness mm-hmm. and I just remember being in the hospital and being like oh my goodness like that could be me and I remember going out to the window and I'm seven years old eight years old and I start to get these thoughts which I believe is the demonic realm mm-hmm. like you're gonna die you're gonna get sick like just cursing yeah, over me, around, yeah. and and I started to believe them, believe mm-hmm. the lies, and, and then slowly but surely I was like, I can't breathe. Oh my gosh! Like, mm. what, is there something wrong with my heart? Is it? And then boom, 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 and then from there, like I remember going like this. <laughs> this is crazy. I used to go like this, and I used to feel like the the pulling, and I'd be like, Why is that? Like so mm. dumb. Like so sorry, yeah, God. If, dumb, if, but... if you're if you're experiencing that, it's not dumb. I'm sorry because obviously I experienced it, but it's like. The, like how the enemy will convince you to make you feel like you're mm-hmm. dying or something, mm-hmm. you're, you're tied up. And so 
I mean, that was just like an everyday thing. I remember yeah. being at home, time buffet, going to like dinner. So I didn't want to talk to anybody because I'm like, I'm going to die right now. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's continuing your mind. So even if when you're free of filming, you're not free from it because yeah. you're like, man, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it later. Yeah. Or it's going to happen. It's going to come. Yeah. And mine came oh at night, gosh, religiously yes. at night, yeah. like every night before bed. It was crazy how it, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, I got it. So the day you're like stressed, you're worried. Yes. but Because you know it's coming. Yeah, that's true slavery, man. But, you know, so I guess the Spirit of God led us to this topic in a sense because we were kind of going on a different route, but yeah, maybe people are struggling up there. And maybe, no, it actually lines up because if you think about what we're going to talk about is having hope in these end times, right? Yeah. Hope in these end times. And panic attacks, and get, I mean, they've already doubled and tripled yeah. since COVID. Yeah. Panic attacks, anxiety, depression, um, suicide, right? But... Let's share a scripture. Let's get some scripture quick that I want to share. I don't know if you have any, but... Yeah, yeah, um, I have a... We can go first. Mm. I want to go to Luke. Listen, there's a scripture. Luke 21, verse 26 says that man's heart will fail them for the fear to come. Expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. Now, he's talking about when Jesus is coming, but there's good talking about signs that are... Things that are going to happen in the earth. That though, in, though, in that time, that like, people's hearts are going to fail them for the fear that's coming. Yeah. I want to tell you guys something right now. If you have panic attacks or anxiety or fear now, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. But, um, but Jesus, man, I mean, yeah. you got to go to, uh, you got what scripture you got? Oh. Because I have to go to John now. Well, real quick, you're in Luke 21, uh, 28. 26, 28. Uh -huh. But when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift your head because your redemption is near. Which ties into what I want to talk about is right. Ephesians 1. Is Reading Ephesians 1 is, it's a, it's a poem to us. It's, it's us understanding the inheritance that we have through Christ Jesus. When you accept Christ into your life what it means, the spiritual blessings, and what we have to look forward to. Because here on earth, it's only going to get worse. It's going to get darker. But God, we have redemption in Him. We're going to be reunited with Him. Our bodies are, are going to be remade perfect into God's image. And so, to me, I want to read... Man, I wish I could read all of it. But... Hmm... Okay, let's do Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of grace that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. Then verse 12, so that we had already put our hope in Christ might bring praise to his glory. In him you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed. The Holy Spirit is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. So when I was thinking about, like we were worshiping it, I was just, okay, like God, what do you what do you want us to talk about? And the word hope, hope, hope. And the only way to have hope is putting your belief in who Jesus is and was and what he did on the, on the cross for us, for you, for, for Joey, for mm -hmm. all of us. And when once we have that, we are sealed with the, the Holy Spirit, which is not only our promise for what's to come after the end of the age and the age to come, but also the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's right. the only thing. He is that medicine. He is the one that's going to, if everything's taken away from us, if Christians are persecuted, if we can't have Bibles, if we can't have this, we can't have that, we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and, and he's the ultimate comforter. Yeah. So like your friend or your whatever. Not enough. It'll never be enough. Is not your boyfriend, your wife, your your even your children. What if they're taken away? Even even if they weren't, mm -hmm. it's not enough. And it's okay to say that. It's yeah. Okay. And the way God works too is like He's the ultimate comforter. Meaning, so like my thing of continually interrupting my mom's sleep or my grandma's sleep at two three in the morning. Right. Yeah. That's not how God works. Yeah. The Holy yeah. Spirit now is your comforter now now. He's the ultimate source, the ultimate fix, in a sense, where you don't have to continue to, you know, what does the Bible say? The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. So now I'm not 
take killing or I mean I'm sorry stealing yeah. my mom's peace and yes, sleep or yes. my grandma I don't call anyone and it's I'll blow you up yeah, till you answer too. At, at, yeah. at like life 911 emergency so now the Holy Spirit yeah. gives you the ultimate comfort where you don't need to call nobody because you may have experienced even even when I got set free from all of it you experienced episodes of like anxiety and I was like mm, nope I bind it bind yeah, it and I yeah. pray and I go to God and, and it would go yeah it would go yeah because I, I believe that we can, we can be possessed as believers. We have the Holy Spirit, but we can be oppressed. oppressed. We can be taunted by mm -hmm. demons, and so anxiety will try to creep up on me. I'm not talking about like, oh my gosh, I have a, a finances or test. No, like anxiety mm -hmm. of where it's that bondage that we're talking about, and I will, like I said, I just bind it in in the name of Jesus, and it it flees. It's gone because it's a spirit. It's yeah. an actual spirit. When you can understand, there's a battle going on right now. But we have authority in Christ. Yeah. And you think about it, oppression could be on the outside or inside. Mm -hmm. Oppression is, people are like, well, I don't have no demon in me, but we're, oppression yeah. is from in within. Yeah. The mind, you know what I'm saying? So there's a, there's like little just thoughts that come in, mind that comes in, and if you agree and hold on to it, boom, now you can, you can be overtaken in a sense, right? Yeah. But um, what you just said about having your hope and peace in Christ, um, that's what I want to read in Luke. I'm sorry, in John 16, 33. This is powerful to me. Like, this is one of the, my favorite scriptures. Um, John 16, 33? Yeah, John 16, verse 33 says, These things, this is Jesus talking, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Another verse says that you will have many trials and tribulation. Suffering. But in sufferings. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And the following, the verse after that, he says, Then Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may be, also may glorify you. Jesus says, you guys, in this world, you're going to have many trials and many tribulations. Fear is going to come, suffering is going to come, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. What he's saying is, I have the answer. Have Put your faith and trust and hope in me. Because I've overcome all this. Yeah. You can't do it on your own. Yeah. Like, the perfect example for me was in the hospital with my brother. When the doctors say there's nothing we can do, what what hope are you going to have? When you have all your hope and trust, doctor, please save my yeah. loved one. And they say, well, there's nothing we can do. Because remember, this is all malpractice. And malpractice kills more people than anything, pretty much. So, um, yeah. when they say we, have, we don't know what to do, I mean, where's your hope come from? Wh what are you going to put your hope and trust in? So... I've experienced that too. The doctors, you bring, get bought in the quiet room and they're like, hey, this is it. We, there's nothing else we can do. We advise you to pull the plug. Yeah. And thank God that God had touched me in there. My family wasn't saved at the time, so I had the anchor of hope at that time. Like, no, 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 no. Mom, don't listen to no. We have faith and trust and hope in God. And that, now my brother's alive. He's at home and he's, he's suffering. There's so, I mean, he's recovering. There's so many people in that when we were there, there's oh my God, there was just we ran to families and families. I'm talking Christmas and New Year's. We we lived a season there. There was families that came. Um, nephew was shot in the head. Okay, he's going through brains just like my brother. We're we're building relations with them. We're 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 trying to minister to them, right? I remember this one family was like, oh, I'm I'm Catholic, like I'm good. They didn't really want our prayers or anything until their priest came. And I was like, you know what? I respect that, but you don't gotta wait. You might not have time, and we I have Christ in me. We could pray, and, and they, a good family, um, they're a good family. They didn't want to receive that, which is fine. And I'm not saying this is the reason what this is why what happened, but what happened was um, he passed because they said they felt led to pull the plug. Now, I, that's, I'm not, there's no condemnation to that, and there's no guilt to that for anyone that feels that way, okay? Um, and maybe the circumstances are different for everybody. I don't know, but... I was telling him, like, you know, let God do the work. Like, let, let, let's see what God, let's pray about it, right? Let's, let's feel. But um, they made the conscious decision. That's their family. Pull the plug and he passed. And, um, but they had their hope in the priest. doctors first. Mm -hmm. And then second, the priest to come and do the last yeah. week blessing. Yeah. You know, they didn't, you know. So, for me, my personal experience. So, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So, yeah. right now, I'm sharing a testimony because I've experienced. I'm not talking about something I've not experienced, I've not been through and dealt with, but I've learned now when my brother was in the hospital as well, 
when I told you about the um the amount of pull the plug, I was gonna make a decision of giving up and going and taking the worldly route. Well, but when God told me, hey, go look, go back up there, look at all your homies, look at all your friends, look at all the face tattoos and guns and reputation and all that, and understand even the doctors can't do nothing for him, but I can. Now, don't get me wrong, God uses doctors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not taking nothing away from a doctor, but ultimately, like I said, you may not be able to get to a doctor. You may, maybe in these times, we may get to the place where your insurance doesn't cover it. So many things can happen where if your faith and trust is in a doctor or medicine, yeah. Hmm, I, yeah. I, I don't want my faith. I don't have my faith and trust in medicine. But I have my faith and trust in God. And and the Bible says clear. He says, hey, be of good cheer for I have, I've overcome the world. Right. And it's so simple now. All you got to do is put your faith and trust in him. Yeah. And not rely on your own understanding yeah. or anyone else's understanding. Uh, but I also want to say, so Ephesians 1.17 I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And so my hope and prayer is that you begin to have revelation of who Jesus is for you. Because once you start to understand who he is, you can actually start to believe it and then bind anxiety, bind yeah. depression, bind addictions and all the things. Yeah. And then, you know, so saying this, I know people are sitting there like, well, how do I do this? How do I do this? I just heard all this and it's good. But number one, get rid of the religious stuff. You, yeah. you can't hang an idol or hang something over your rearview mirror and cross and believe and that's going to no. work for you. Yeah. This is a relationship thing because religion says do, do, do. Christ is done, done, done. It's done. Just believe in me. Have your yes. faith in me. Yes. So, um, comment below or do whatever you got to do so we can help lead you to some scriptures. Uh, yeah. What's the other one? First Timothy talks about, I want you to declare this over your mind. For I did not give you a spirit of fear, but a love, peace, and sound mind. Understand that God does not give you a spirit of fear. The spirit of fear that you're exp experiencing, fear, anxiety, is coming from who? Recognize your enemy. Yeah, yes. You got to recognize so your enemy. Yeah. Once you start recognizing the characteristics of God and Satan, when things come up, you're like, oh, yeah, that's not yeah. a God. That's of my enemy. He's trying to take me down. And then you can rebuke it. Yeah. You cannot agree with it. When you agree with the anxiety, when you agree with the depression, with the hopelessness, that is how yeah. the enemy wants you. And so you got to bind it. Bind it up. Know your enemy. So we'll give you some scriptures. Get those scriptures. And, um, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. You can better comment, subscribe. <laughs> all right, bye. All right. God bless. God bless.